Hello friends, I am Ravi Bhatt, Research Scholar, Department of English, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Central University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. And today, I am going to deliver this lecture on behalf of Dr. Gyanesh Kumar Tewari, Assistant Professor, Department of Psychology, School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Central University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today's topic of our discussion is Psychology and Criminal Behavior, Part 2. And in this episode, I will introduce the biological factors of crime and their association with criminal behaviors. It will follow the discussion of the concept and history of social learning theories. I will also explain major theories of social learning, the applications of social learning. Theory will be also discussed. The discussion will end with the conclusions of these issues. The presentation in this episode will follow the following order. Module 1 would be introduction to the biological factors in crime. Module 2, relation between biological factors and crime. Module 3, concept and history of social learning theories. Module 4, theories of social learning. Module 5, applications of social learning. And module 6 would be the conclusion. Let us start our discussion with the meaning and introduction of the biological factors of crime. The forensic psychologists, criminologists and scientists of other allied disciplines have sought to explain the reason behind the causes of criminal behaviors for long, which have resulted in development of many theories having different assumptions. With the beginning of human civilization, the causes of criminal behaviors were supposed to be spiritualistic or demonological in nature. The classical theories of crime have their roots in the writings of Beccaria 1738-1794 and Bentham 1748-1832 who opposed the then methods of dealing with crime. In the vein, they have put forth new assumptions about human nature and social divines. They portrayed humans as having free will and hedonistic nature. They also have also assumed that the individuals make a conscious and rational decision to commit a crime based on the expectation of pleasurable outcomes and crime can be reduced by altering the outcomes of the hedonistic calculation. The basic assumptions of positivism are entirely opposed to those of classicism. These theories do not hold responsible individual for his or her actions, rather they posit that behavior is determined by factors beyond the control of the individual. Thus, changing behavior of the individual will not be effective. They argued that identifying and eliminating the factors that are causing the individual to act in a certain way will be effective in combating crime and antisocial behaviors. Thus, they recognize multiple causes of behavior which may range from single factor, multiple causes to a series of events or situations occurring over a period of time. This argument was basically borrowed from the medical model through which a medical practitioner diagnoses and treats illnesses. Biological model is one model of criminal behavior which assumes that it is the biological factors which make a person susceptible to involve and commit in criminal activities. Explanations of divines based on biological factors are among the earliest and the most recent theories in criminology that explain human behaviors on the biological makeup of the individual. The basic assumption of biological theory was that the biological factors determine physical capabilities which, in turn, contribute to the nature and type of the behavior a person has. Physical appearance, genetic factors, hormonal activities, abnormalities in brain functions, abnormalities in neurotransmitter activities, etc. are some of the most important biological factors which have been reported to be significantly associated with the criminal behaviors. There are many biological factors which have been associated with criminal behaviors. Major biological factors which are supposed to cause criminal behavior are as under. First, physical appearance. Second, genetic factors. Third, hormonal activities. Fourth, orthomolecular factors. Fifth, the central nervous system. And now, we'll go through them one by one. First, physical appearance. The early biological theories focused on observable physical features of offenders such as appearance. Lambroso is considered the father of modern criminology who based his theory on Darwin's theory of the survival of species. He viewed criminals as less developed 
and viewed them as physically or mentally backward as compared to the rest of the society. Lambroso, 1876, identified a number of atavistic or ape-like qualities that generally reflected the physical features of the apes from whom man was a descendant. In his study of the offenders, he was reported that more than 40% of the criminals had five or more atavistic traits. These can be termed as the born criminals who lack of evolutionary progression observed in majority of humans. The rest of the criminals fall into the categories of criminaloids and insane criminals who commit crime due to mental, physical and social conditions. Insane criminals are idiots and mentally disturbed individuals. His theory was challenged by later research which did not find support for his arguments. The later researchers did not find differences in the physical makeup of convicts and a control group of non-criminal citizens, Goring, 1993. Lombrosian atavistic characteristics is divided into physical characteristics and non-physical characteristics. Physical characteristics, protruding jaw, high forehead, asymmetrical face, bad teeth, deep, close-set eyes, excessively long arms or legs, abnormal nasal features, exaggerated sex organs. And non-physical characteristics include sensitivity to temperature changes, agility, lacking a sense of right or wrong, fondness for animals, tolerance of pain. Sheldon 1949 has given three basic somatotypes and related temperaments based on his observation of delinquents. He reported that mesomorphic individuals were more likely to commit delinquent acts as compared to other youths. Gluick and Eleanor 1956. Due to methodological problems, subjectivity and impractical observations, Sheldon's theory was also criticized. Second, genetic factors. Researchers have shown that predisposition of criminal behavior has a strong association with the genetic inheritance of the person. Two methods have been employed to study the effects of genetic endowment, twin studies and adoption studies. These studies have shown that not only criminal behavior but also psychological aspects such as low self-control, sensation seeking and temperament have also genetic base. Rho 2002 The monozygotic that is identical or dizygotic that is fraternal twin studies have shown criminal behaviors have genetic basis. The former is the product of a single fertilized egg, whereas the latter is the result of two separate eggs fertilized by separate sperm. Thus, the two are not genetically similar and any difference in their criminal behaviors may be understood to be contributed by genetic factors. The concordance rate in the former is higher as compared to the latter. Lyons, 1996, reported higher concordance in adult criminality for MZ twins than DZ twins. This study suggests that genetic factors have strong impact on the behaviors and actions of the individuals. Adoption studies attempt to establish similarity between the adopted offspring and the biological parent which have provided support similar to that found in twin studies. Skewl Singer, 1972, reported that psychopaths to have more psychopathic biological relatives than do non-psychopaths. The results in both of these studies offer a weak genetic argument. The researchers have demonstrated that 49% of criminal boys have criminal biological fathers while only 31% of non-criminal boys have a criminal biological father. Brennan et al. 1996, Hutchings and Mendick 1977. Wallers 1992 also reported a low to moderate correlation between heredity and crime. The biosociological approach, a recent development, argues that the biological makeup of the organism and the surrounding environment are closely related. The environment plays a part in shaping the organism and the organism shapes the environment. In short, genetic research is still in its infancy and the future advances may reveal contributions to a wide range of behaviors. Third, hormonal activities. Hormones are chemicals which are secreted by endocrine glands and have strong influence on the development of behaviors and metabolism of the body. Abnormality in the levels of secretions of particular hormones results into many important consequences, leading to abnormal physical and mental illnesses as well as growth, reproduction and functioning of the nervous system. For example, an individual with a congenital hormonal defect may be overtly aggressive 
in situations that force him or her into a choice between fight and flight. In explaining of divine behavior, the researchers have focused on reproductive hormones, Shah and Roth 1974. Androgen, a male sex hormone, has been reported to be associated with aggressive behavior, Booth and Osgood 1993. Solar et al. 2000. Later researchers have found that the level of testosterone is determined by diet, stress, exercise and social factors. Cats and Chambles 1995 and aggressive behavior may cause testosterone levels to increase rather than the other way around. Harris 1999. Fourth, orthomolecular factors. Orthomolecular factors are basically chemicals which are introduced to the body either through diet or other means. The reactive hypoglycemia is related to criminal behaviors. Scouse 1980. Alcohol and drugs are other factors linked to divine behaviors which are almost uncontroversial. The researchers argue that alcohol is a disinhibitor making it easier for an individual to commit crime. Rice and Roth 1993 have argued that alcohol alters the processing of information and instigates aggression, irritability, passivity and sluggishness. The use of other drugs may also lead to criminal behavior. The mechanism underlying the correlation between drugs and divines is not clear. From a psychopharmacological point of view, drugs have a direct casual impact on cognitive, affective and behavioral activities that lead a person to commit crime. Goldstein 1989. Fifth, the central nervous system. Almost all meaningful behavior are regulated and controlled by the activities of nervous system. The brain and other parts of central nervous system have bigger role in the regulation of normal and divine behaviors. The abnormalities of organic and functional aspects of the central nervous system lead to many sorts of exurb behaviors. With the advancement of technology, many techniques have been developed to study the living human brain such as magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, positron emission tomography, PET scan and electroencephalography EEG. The studies based on these techniques concluded that there is clear evidence relating to brain functioning, especially frontal and temporal lobe problems, to divine activity, Rain et al. 1995. The neurotransmitters are chemical which are responsible for transmission of electrical impulses in the different parts of the nervous system which significantly impact human behaviors. They alter the ability to process information and communicate in the brain and in turn the behavior of the individual is changed. Anderson 2007. Serotonin, an inhibitor, is assumed to play a role in regulating aggressive and impulsive behaviors. Anderson 2007, its low levels have been reported to be associated with aggressive behaviors. Motif et al. 1998. It has also been found to impact impulse control, hyperactivity and other behavior related to divines. Verkenum et al. 1996. Dopamine has reverse activity of serotonin. The higher levels of dopamine lead to increased action and pleasure-seeking behaviors which is associated with aggression, Anderson 2007. The use of alcohol and other substances alter the activities of neurotransmitters which significantly alter social behavior, Brunner 1996. Limitations of biological explanations. According to Walsh 2009, following are the objections which are raised against biological approach. Biological theories are deterministic and socially unacceptable. Next. It ignores the interdependence of biology and environment. Third, it does not assume social construction of crime. Fourth, genes do play a role in traits and subsequent behavior, not in the determination of criminal behaviors. Fifth, the biological factors that contribute behavior can't be altered. Sixth, the crime rates change rapidly while changes in genes may require many generations. Seventh, it ignores the role of psychological and social factors. Eighth, the cause-effect relationship cannot be established by this approach. Social learning theories have a strong impact on the way divine behaviors are explained. Learning, as we all know, is a lifelong process which 
takes from birth to death. It is also known as modeling or vicarious learning. According to this approach, the learner chooses a model present in his environment appropriate to his needs and predispositions whose behaviors guide the nature and quality of learning. Bendura and Walters 1963 were the propagator of this theory which has many variants. According to them, children learn by copying the behaviors of significant others such as parents, siblings, peers and other individuals close to them. Social learning refers to a general theory that helps explain the acquisition, maintenance and change in the criminal and divine behaviors involving social, non-social and cultural factors operating both to motivate and control criminal behaviors. The basic assumption behind the social learning process is that the context of social structure, interaction and situation produces both confirming and divine behaviors. It is not necessary that the model should be present very close to the learners to learn, successfully as per the paradigms of social learning theory. In many cases, the children can learn from characters, both real and fictional, which have known to them through electronic and print media. If the contents are antisocial, it results in criminal and divine behaviors. Bandura and Walters 1963 have combined conditioning and modeling in a general discussion of learning. They argued that the degree to which a child models his or her behavior is imitated by the level of reward or punishment that the model receives. For example, a child observing an act of aggression by another person or a fictional character is more likely to copy that act if the aggressive person is rewarded or not punished. Therefore, the process of learning through operant conditioning can take a vicarious route through observation of the experiences of others. History of Social Learning Skinner proposes stimulus response theory to describe language use and development and verbal behavior using paradigm of operant conditioning theory. Skinner 1947 According to this theory, an organism emits responses to make some changes in the environment that lead to satisfy the needs. The outcomes of its responses determine the likelihood of its future occurrences. Skinner's theory of learning formed the basis of social learning theory. Miller and Dollard 1941 attempted to explain the constructs of psychoanalytical theory in terms of stimulus response framework. They argued that personality comprises of learned habits and drive acts as a need which stimulates a response. There is also a drive of imitation which gets positively reinforced by social interactions. Rotter 1954 denied the role of past and advocated for the holistic interaction of the environment and individual personality that creates probabilities of behaviors which result in learning after reinforcement. He emphasized the subjective nature of responses and effectiveness of reinforcement types. Chomsky 1959 criticized the radical stimulus response theory of learning and argued that this mechanistic paradigm is unable to explain complex behavior like language acquisition in humans and speculated for some cognitive mechanisms. Albert Bandura developed his theory of social learning in his theoretical background which was not able to explain adequately in terms of stimulus response paradigm. It emphasized interpersonal context which is the most effective mechanism of human learning. The social learning theory made a balance between behavioristic assumptions and included social and cognitive factors within the framework of SR theories. There are four major explanatory concepts in the social learning theory of Bandura. They are differential association, definitions, differential reinforcement and imitation. Let's talk about differential association first. It refers to direct association and interaction with others who engage in certain kinds of behavior or express norms, values, attitudes supportive of such behavior as well as indirect association and identification with more distant reference groups with provides for mechanisms of learning. The major immediate and intermediate social contexts include family and friends, direct and indirect interaction and exposure to secondary and reference groups as well as mass media, internet, computer games and other virtual groups. War 2002. Definitions are one's own orientations, rationalizations, justifications, excuses and other attitudes that define the commission of an act as relatively more right or wrong. 
good or bad, desirable or undesirable, justified or unjustified, appropriate or inappropriate. Definitions include those learned from socialization into general, religious, moral and other conventional values and norms that are favorable to confirming behavior and unfavorable to committing any deviant or criminal acts. Third, differential reinforcement. It refers to the balance of anticipated or actual rewards and the punishments that follow or are consequences of behavior. Fourth, imitation. It refers to the engagement in behavior after the direct or indirect observation of similar behavior by others. Whether or not the behavior modeled by others will be imitated is affected by the characteristics of the models. The behavior observed and the observed consequences of the behavior vicarious reinforcement, Bendura 1977. The observation of salient models in primary groups and in the media affects both pro-social and divine behavior, Donnerstein and Linz 1995. Imitation is more important in the initial acquisition and performance of novel behavior than in the maintenance or cessation of behavioral patterns once established, but it continues to have some effect in maintaining behavior. These concepts of social learning define sets of variables that first are part of the same underlying processes, second that are operative in each individual's learning history, third act in the immediate situation in which an opportunity for a crime occurs and fourth that represents meso-level and macro-level social structural context. Basic tenets of social learning theory according to Ben Durain Walters 1963-1967. The basic tenets of social learning theory are as follows. First, learning is not purely behavioral, rather it is a cognitive process that takes place in a social context. Second, learning can occur by observing a behavior and by observing the consequences of the behavior, vicarious reinforcement. Third, learning involves observation, extraction of information from those observations and making decisions about the performance of the behavior. Reinforcement plays a role in learning but is not entirely responsible for learning. Fifth, the learner is not a passive recipient of information. Cognition, environment and behavior all mutually influence one another, reciprocal determinism. According to social learning theory, there are following steps of learning. Four components of social learning are attentional process, paying attention to the model is a condition for learning to start, retentional process, remembering what the model did is a condition for imitating the model's behaviors, reproductive process, people must have the capacity or skill to imitate the behaviors of the model, and fourth, motivational process. People must be motivated to imitate behaviors. Another influential theory of social learning was proposed by Dollard and Miller, 1941. They attempted to explain the constructs of psychoanalytical theory in terms of stimulus response. They argued that personality comprises of learned habits and drive acts as a need which stimulates a response. There is also a drive of imitation which gets positively reinforced by social interactions. They made a good attempt to, to explain Freudian concepts such as repression and displacement in terms of learning, drive reduction theory and also try to reconcile psychoanalysis and behaviorism. The basic assumption of the theory are first drive stimulus that impels the organism to some behavior, hunger, second cue guides or indicates the appropriate direction for behavior, third response behaviors directed at reducing drive and fourth reinforcement anything that lowers drive. Social learning theory has many important applications at individual, community, group and organizational levels. Some of them are as follows. First, it can be effectively used to understand and explain the genesis and maintenance of criminal behaviors as these are learned in both social and non-social situations through combinations of direct enforcement, vicarious reinforcement, explicit instruction and observation. Second, according to Miller 2011, it can be applied for both moral and gender role 
development as social learning theory emphasizes the variable nature of moral development due to the changing social circumstances. Moral judgments involve a complex process of considering and weighing various criteria in a given social situation. Similarly, the gender development has to do with the interactions of numerous social factors involving all the interactions the individual encounters. Third, social learning theory proposes that rewards are not the only force behind creating motivation. Thoughts, beliefs, morals and feedback all help to motivate us. Three other ways in which we learn are vicarious experience, verbal persuasion and physiological states. Fourth, principles of social learning theory have been applied extensively to the study of media violence. It has been argued that observed or experienced positive rewards and lack of punishment for aggressive behaviors reinforces aggression. Many research studies have discovered significant correlations between viewing violent television and aggression later in life. Anderson and Bushman, 2001. Fifth, entertainment education can be used to induce positive social change by telecasting programs comprising socially desired behaviors in a positive way from models portrayed in these programs, Banjara 2004. Sixth, another important application of social learning theory has been in the treatment and conceptualization of anxiety and other mental disorders. Biological model of criminal behavior assumes that it is the biological factors which make a person susceptible to involve and commit criminal activities. Physical appearance, genetic factors, hormonal activities, abnormalities in brain functions, abnormalities in neurotransmitter activities etc. are some of the most important biological factors which have been reported to be significantly associated with the criminal behaviors. The theory has been criticized on the grounds of its deterministic nature and denying interaction of biology and the environment. Skinner proposed stimulus response theory in which an organism emits responses to make some changes in the environment that leads to satisfy its need. The outcome of its responses determine the likelihood of its future occurrences. Miller and Dollard, 1941, attempted to explain the constructs of psychoanalytical theory in terms of stimulus response. They argued that personality comprises of learned habits and drive acts as a need which stimulates a response. There is also a drive of imitation which gets positively reinforced by social interactions. The social learning theory of Bandura emphasized interpersonal context which is the most effective mechanism of human learning. The social learning theory made a balance between behavioristic assumptions and included social and cognitive factors within the framework of SR theories. There are four major explanatory concepts in the social learning theory of Bandura. Differential association, definitions, differential reinforcement and imitation. Social learning theory has many important applications at individual, community, group and organizational levels. It has evinced its usefulness in the areas of crime, moral development, gender role development, management, media violence, entertainment and clinical settings. With all this information, here we come to the end of today's lecture. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. It's time for you all to do some self-study. This is Ravi Bhatt signing off. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for more MCQs, quizzes, LORs. Our website is www.cec.nic.in. Till then, goodbye.